Hey guys, Dean Mike here for another episode. Hope everybody's doing all right. Last episode, we spent time doing a laundry list of items. We turned a stick into a honeycomb. We found a way to notch ourselves a new item, the ocarina. Learned a song from our friend Marin, who we escorted from a romantic trip at the beach all the way to the animal village where she could soothe the soul of a widely bullied walrus. So now we were instructed to go into the Yarna Desert to our east, to our east, to the east, links left, all right, and get ourselves a key to the fourth dungeon. So this is a very small area of the game. If you'll notice, the frame rate drops in this area are pretty bad. There's a lot of on-screen chaos with the pokies and the spinners. Just do your best to kind of dance around those guys, not get hit. We don't have a ton of hearts right now, so I'm trying to be careful. So the difficulty in the pokies is that similarly to the bob from the slime cavern, or the key cavern, when you hit one, its body will bounce all around and it'll try to smack you with its balls. You don't want that. So just avoid those, get out of the way. Come up here, this little alcove of the desert. Get yourselves a secret seashell. Pretty nice. There's also a little bit of a... I'm not sure if it's a filter or if it's just the way that the game is being rendered on, on my end, but it kind of seems like there's a little bit of a haze, which is kind of cool. So we need to be pretty careful here. Let's go ahead and take these steps down and see what this is all about. Heading west. Hey guys, D-Mike here. If you enjoyed this episode, consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. It helps me out a lot. Thanks. There's nothing worse than having a nice afternoon in the desert. And then you get, you wind up with crabs. You know, you get, you, you're covered in sand. You got, you got your crabs. Sand's getting in places you didn't even know you had. Nobody wants that. Nobody wants sandy crabs. Bomb that wall. Get yourself another piece of heart. Refills our life gauge. And now we're up to eight pieces of heart. Pretty nice. Making some waves. So heading out of this little mini cave here. We're going to go ahead and run into that because I'm an idiot come here for the actual purpose. Got ourselves a mini boss fight. Here in the Yarna Desert, it's protected by its quicksand guardian. It's not going to pop up a name, apparently. I don't think bo many bosses in this game do get name cards, but this is the Land Mola. Make sure not to fall into that quicksand. It will pop you down into the cave that we just were so no harm no foul but you got to start the the fight over so that's a little bit of a hindrance a little annoying i like his tail it's kind of like a propeller kind of gives you like a, a robotic feel for like a centipede or maybe a millipede whatever he is supposed to be kind of like a moldorm so fun fact about quicksand Quicksand, when you see movies or television shows, is often very detrimental and destructive. Killing the line, Mola gets us the fast track to falling in the quicksand. Like I said, I wasn't going to do it anyway. We'll pick up the angler key. As we were instructed to do. But anyway, quicksand. Quicksand on television and... and movies is often shown to be an instant kill. You know, you wind up in quicksand and you get sucked down into it and you're doomed, right? It's actually a much slower process. And because quicksand is a bit of a non-Newtonian fluid, which means that applying force to it will cause it to change its state from a liquid to like a semi-solid. If you're careful and you just slowly shimmy out of it, you can get out of quicksand. Trying to find something on the shore or wherever you're at to pull yourself out would obviously help, but panicking and doing a lot of aggressive movements will only cause you trouble. So we're told to go to the mountain waterfall. We need to find somewhere to stick that key in. 
And since we're down some hearts, let's go ahead and have a little snack. So apparently those don't heal up any hearts. I thought that they did. Uh, fun fact, everybody. Uh, it doesn't. That heals you zero hearts. But we've got some choppable grass here in the animal village. Let's talk to Marin one last time. Very sweet. We always know where to find Marin. We'll, we'll be back to see her again. Don't worry. She is surprisingly a little important to the plot of the game. So, the owl wants us to head over here, to the waterfall. However, we've got a little bit of time prior to doing that. If you all remember, in one of the earlier episodes, I spent time with the crane game, and I got myself a little figurine. A little mini chow chow. So like I mentioned, those figurines can be shared. Surprisingly, the Chow Chow figurine, when acquired down here, belongs in the house of Madame Meow Meow. I bet you never would have guessed if you did, kudos. So these little stands, like I mentioned before, when you acquire a certain figurine, you can put it on the pedestal. There's no real benefit to doing this other than just kind of flair. Little stylistic choice, it's kind of fun. I mean, you can come back to play the trendy game over and over again, collect all the figurines. It's more of a completionist thing, which we will do because it's fun. So now there's a new figurine. So we would love to play the trendy game. We can now play it 64 times. Nintendo 64! So, as we all remember, we're gonna move forward with X, we're gonna move right with A. Now this one's a little tricky because you have to time it to where the crane will calm down on the Goomba because it's on a moving platform. So as you can see, it kind of ends up in like the, the middle, a little bit to the right of the middle. So you're gonna want to time it correctly. So that way, when the crane comes down, you can pick it up, which is not what happened just now, because I timed that very poorly. So we're going to try that again. That was actually to show you what not to do clearly. So we're going to try it again. This one's for realsies. So you're going to want to try to time the crane to be moving forward when the Goomba is going out like this. Try to set it up so it's kind of in the middle here. So that way when it pops down, ah, might be good, get it. Come on, it looks good, it looks good. Do we have it everybody? Ah, oh, goodness, okay. Now, that's not as much of a problem as it looks because now it's off the moving platform. So we got ourselves out of hot water now. We can just move up a little bit with a crane and then pop over all the way to the right. And hopefully without too much jingle jangling, or just not, okay. So, probably need to move over a little bit more to give the crane's arms a chance to fully expand. We'll try that one more time here. That might do it. Are we good? Do we get around him? That looks pretty good, guys. I'm feeling good about this one. Hopefully not too much swinging around. Yes, firmly in our grasp. The Goomba is ours. We'll call that a day. There's another item on the other moving platform that you'll see up there, but we're not going to worry about that quite yet. We'll come back to that later. That's got implications for a remaster add-on. So that will be part of an eventual episode. It's a part of the game that I understand the intent trying to kind of piggyback up off of kind of it's more sandboxy nintendo games but it kind of falls short for me in this one i don't love it 
but I will show it off. I'm not going to show it off to its entirety. There's a ton of time you can spend with it if you choose to, but it doesn't quite rustle my jimmies. So I'm actually going to pass on getting too in depth, but I will show you at least enough of it that you can get the hang of it. And that's something that we'll encounter later with Dampe right here from Ocarina of Time lore. Moving that rock will get you another teleporter, which is very, very nice. And I think that there is, wait a second. Let's go ahead and get our shovel out for a moment and see if we can find something nice here in this corner. Nope, just kidding, guys. That actually wasn't anything. I was testing to see if you were paying attention. So if your thought process was, hey, there's nothing there, then you are very self-aware. Good for you. So we were told that there's a waterfall around here that we need to take care of. But before I do that, I actually forgot to grab this in an earlier episode. Which, if you forget this in the original game, you can't come back to get it. Because once you get rid of Bow Wow, these flowers cannot be approached. However, in the beginning of the Bottle Grotto, there was a chest. Now, if you take the teleporter, obviously, you can come back to this. But if you just finish the dungeon, it teleports you outside, so you wouldn't come back. So instead, come back in here, get yourself 50 rupees. Very nice. Gonna need all the rupees we can get for a very special item. So make sure to come back and get that if you forgot like I did. Very important. And we'll make some time to go and grab the special thing that's in the tail cave as well. So we're gonna pop up here. This is actually the part of the game that has the best soundtrack. I love this song. We're gonna dig around up here for a little bit. Excuse you. No. So, Tao Tao Heights, Tal Tal, Tao Tao, however you wanna say it. This is one of the best tracks in the game. Similarly to the Animal Village, there is a some Overclock remix from that website. Some work done on a, a track done. There was actually an entire suite of music done for Link's Awakening, just for the original before this one came out. And a bunch of different composers who got together and just put together an absolutely beautiful arrangement of music. I'm a huge fan of it. I will make sure to link it in the description. I will make sure to fall into that hole, as you all probably expected me to do, because I am an elite player of Link's Awakening. So there's a piece of heart there. It's actually easier to get from the other side. Approaching it from the left is a little bit more tricky, so you're not going to want to do that. But moving some stuff around, pushing some of these stones, the fireball, which you can swat away. You come over here get our second piece of heart of the episode. We're pretty flush with pieces of heart now. You know, we've got eight hearts. That's pretty good. There's actually more pieces of heart in this game than there were in the original. Probably for to pad the game out a little bit, but also to maybe give beginning players an easier time. Not that you'll have any difficulty. I'm assuming that for those of you who've ever played this game, by the time you're at the final boss, the amount of hearts that you have is good enough if you just beat all of the eight dungeons. Like, realistically, you start with three, then you wind up with eight from each of them. So 11, that's pretty good, if my math is correct. I'm a little rusty. So pick up 50 more rupees. That's very nice. Getting closer to the total. We're actually going to need a little over... Actually, a little under a thousand. Not over. We'll come back to that chest later. We actually can't do anything with it yet. There's a specific item that we need. Once again, my favorite item in the game. So we've got a gentleman here who is waving to us. It looks like he might be in danger. So we'll see what he wants. But there's this waterfall in the way, and that's trouble. So we can't quite make our way into the cavern. But they did say something about how if there was a waterfall in the way, that if you hop down from the top, that you might find success. So we'll pop down, 
to that area again. But speaking of that guy who's waving, we'll come back to him. And I won't tell a little story in the meantime. It makes me think of when I was younger. And one of the things in my life that would cause me, I guess I would say, I don't know, first-hand, second-hand embarrassment, just depending upon how you want to frame it, whatever, is when you would be in public anywhere and you're walking around and by chance you wind up bumping into somebody that you know and they're waving and you're like, oh man, I know that person, you know, friend, family, whatever. And it looks like they're very eagerly trying to greet you, waving their hands back and forth like, hey, you know, it's me. Right? And how sad it would be in those moments when the person actually wasn't waving it to you at all, but to somebody behind you. So just thinking of that makes me tense up a little bit, a little PTSD. But anyway, we got that angler key from Lenmola. Go ahead and use that here in the waterfall that we couldn't have been able to, tra to traverse before is now going to open up and give us access to this derpy eyed fish. Kind of looks like a magic carp. Maybe he's got a few extra chromosomes, who knows? But anyway, we are a little closer now to approaching the fourth dungeon. But imagine the embarrassment as a child of, I mean, even as an adult, I'm sure it happens to plenty of people them, to them too. I guess it's this is not an age restricted level of embarrassment, folks. The shame that you feel when you are expecting to greet somebody or have them say hi to you and then it turns out that it's it's not for you it's for somebody else yeah it's kind of embarrassing it's sad or the i actually had to learn this as i got older walking around at school and seeing people who you know when i see people i in passing, I normally just say hi, you know, sure, like, hey, you know, if you get a second, maybe how you doing? But I learned very quickly that some people greet each other in passing by saying what's up, which is fine. Saying what's up is nice, but saying what's up to somebody, I learned the proper response in return is also what's up. So word to the wise, everybody, be more hip and trendy with your language than I was back then. So... If I say what's up to you someday, I expect a hearty what's up and maybe a wave to somebody behind me as long as I'm convinced that it's for me. So let's just get it all out of the way. So coming up here, our waving gentleman, Papal. He is the papa of the mama that we gave the ribbon to before. Well, not the ribbon, we have the ribbon from, we gave her the Yoshi doll. He, but he wants some vittles. Maybe a nice trip to a Cracker Barrel. You remember before we had dog food, bananas, and now we got a pineapple. So he wants the pineapple. He is very excited. And in return, he gives us a hibiscus. Nice little flower. I wonder if there was somebody that asked for a flower before that we've met. Maybe, maybe not. So he's very excited. He's, he's om nom nomin, enjoying pineapples. So fun fact, actually, this is a uh, scientifically proven that pineapples are actually the number one fruit in the world. So for those of you who enjoy pineapples, uh, not on pizza, ugh. but in general, yeah, get yourself some pineapples. So now that we've unlocked the fourth dungeon, we'll find that there's darker water here that we can't traverse. However, that might be something that we fix when we jump into the fourth dungeon. It seems to be kind of fishy, a little aquatic, but that dark water is impossible for us to get through, so we can't really explore the mountain range fully yet. So I guess that's something we'll have to deal with next time. So we pop down from the waterfall and we find the entrance to the fourth dungeon. Let's pop down here real quick. Just so you can all see. Pushing this stone out of the way into this crevasse and taking a brief hop over top. Brings you over here. So it's a nice little 
uh, pop through if you need it. Now the only downside is that you have to go back and, and pop into the dungeon, but when you're done in that area, you can come through there, which is really cool. It's a quick little exit to get you out of there. And it lets you activate this teleporter. So now we can go over here to Dime Shack to get back. Or you can just go wherever you want to. What's kind of fun is that this area here is got these little holes in it. So, uh, excuse you. If you are a fan of shooty hoops and you can throw a bomb in this hole, not like I just did. We'll try that one more time. Come on, Link. See what happens. I thought something was... Okay, well... I got excited. I'm sorry. I lied to you all. I thought that was going to be pretty cool. I thought that that was going to get me something neat, but uh, apparently not. Game decided to make me look like a fooly fool. So anyway, next time, we're going to head back up to the mountain range. We're going to pop down across where the waterfall used to be. And we're going to take on that fourth dungeon. Thanks for joining me, everybody. Hopefully you had a lot of time. Hopefully you get a snack on some pineapple in your spare time. Enjoy yourselves and take care. I've been D-Mike. See ya.